Welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to tell you a story that turned my life around and made me believe that real horror can hide in the most unexpected places. This story is about a cursed island where my friends and I are faced with an inexplicable nightmare. If you like scary stories, then don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so that you don't miss new creepy stories. And after watching it, be sure to look in the comments. I will be interested to know what you think about this story and what moments seem to you the most frightening. You know there are stories that are better kept out of earshot. This one is like that. I was on this island, and what I saw turned my idea of what could happen in real life upside down. A long time ago, when I was still young and adventurous, a few friends and I decided to spend a vacation on a secluded island, which an old sailor advised us. We all thought it would be a great opportunity to leave the bustling city and enjoy the real nature. The island was secluded, with no inhabited places, and we were sure it was the perfect place for an adventure. We arrived on the island early in the morning. Immediately upon disembarkation, we were greeted by an ominous silence, broken only by the sounds of waves hitting the shore. We were prepared for the fact that the island was wild and inhospitable, but this silence seemed too deep, too untamed. There was not a single living soul on the island itself, only thickets, echoes of an abandoned civilization, and a strange atmosphere that was difficult to describe. The first day passed without incident. We set up camp and explored the shore, collecting firewood and enjoying the solitude. But on the second day, the oddities began to appear. We found the remains of an old foundation embedded in the ground, surrounded by rare and strange plants. There were old, rusty metal structures inside the foundation, but the strangest thing is the traces we found, as if someone or something had been trying to get out of this place for a long time. We continued our research, and on the third day, we came across the entrance to the underground tunnels. It looked like an old underground storage facility or even a bunker, we decided to go downstairs, thinking it might be an interesting adventure. The tunnels were narrow and damp, with rusty metal walls and musty air. It smelled of mold and decay. When we went deeper into the tunnels, we noticed that in some places, the ceiling had collapsed, and the walls were covered with some strange symbols that we could not make out. These signs looked so alien that we had a strange feeling that we had invaded someone's personal space. In addition, in some places the walls were smeared with greasy, black spots. On top of that, we began to hear strange noises, similar to rustling, but none of us could pinpoint their source. On the fourth day, the strangeness began to increase. We found a lot of old crates and containers filled with what looked like fragments of instruments and medical supplies. One of these containers turned out to be a box with medical instruments that had clearly been used many years ago, perhaps in some unsightly procedures. This box was covered with dust and cobwebs, and looked as if no one had touched it for many years. The most eerie discovery was the room at the deepest end of the tunnels. We found it by accident when our flashlights illuminated some metal doors. Beyond them was not just a room, but something that could be called a laboratory. Old equipment, bottles of chemicals, and in the center of the room stood a large metal structure resembling an operating table. An old tattered bathrobe was scattered on the table, and worst of all, strange diagrams and notes hung on the walls, which, although unreadable, caused a feeling of horror. On the fifth day, when we were planning to leave, a tragedy happened. One of our friends, Jack, is missing. We noticed it when we were returning to our camp and couldn't find it. We went back into the tunnels full of fear and anxiety to find him. The search continued until late in the evening, but he was still missing. When we entered the tunnels again, we found his backpack left in one of the cells. The backpack was empty, and we noticed that strange sounds began to be heard in the tunnels. Creaks, footsteps, and even some insinuating whispers. Suddenly, one of us noticed a small hole in the wall, from which it is visible that there was another room on the other side. We decided to explore it. When we discovered a hole in the wall through which another room could be seen, many scenarios began to play out in our imagination. 
We hastily took our flashlights and went down into the part of the tunnels that had previously been hidden from them. Inside the room, illuminated by the dim light of our lanterns, it was even more eerie than anywhere else before. The room looked like something between a laboratory and a storage room. The floor was littered with old debris, and there were fragments of what looked like medical equipment in the corner. On one of the walls hung photographs in dirty and yellowed frames. The images were blurry and incomprehensible, but some of them showed some kind of creepy experiments or ugly anomalies. Trembling with fear, we continued to explore the room, coming across even more strange finds, torn documents and records, from which it could be concluded that experiments were conducted on this island, possibly related to mind control or mental disorders. Too late, we noticed that our backpack with food was missing. We started looking for him, but there was nothing edible in the room. We found other exits, but they were blocked by rubble or closed by metal doors that could not be opened. The feeling of hopelessness began to grow. Trying to figure out what happened to Jack and our supplies, we became increasingly irritated and panicked. The air in the tunnels was getting worse. It was only enough for a couple of deep breaths. Hunger and fatigue began to take over. We began to notice that the sounds around us were getting stranger. Rustles, echoes of footsteps, and even whispers that could not come from. The longer we stayed in those damn tunnels, the more our consciousness blurred between reality and horror. Rustles and whispers followed us at every step, increasing our paranoia. We felt like we were trapped with no way out. Even simple breathing became torture. The air was so musty and heavy that every breath brought pain. We continued to search for Jack, but the longer he remained missing, the less hope we had. At some point, one of us, Mike, began to insist that we should get to the surface and leave Jack. We can't stay here any longer, he repeated, otherwise we'll all just go crazy. But when we tried to find a way back to the exit, tunnels began to turn into a maze. Every turn that seemed familiar led us to a dead end. Walls seemed to shift, as in some kind of nightmare, and any direction we chose seemed wrong. We began to wander in complete despair, and soon it became clear that we were completely lost. The anxiety was growing by the hour. Steve, who used to be the calmest of us, began to twitch nervously, and his gaze became somehow empty and clouded. Suddenly, he began to whisper something about hearing Jack's voice calling him from the depth the tunnels. We tried to calm him down, but at some point he broke off and ran into the darkness, shouting that he had to save his friend. We rushed after him, but the tunnels became narrower and more confusing. The sound of his footsteps and screams echoed through the maze until they finally died down completely. We ran, desperately lighting the way in front of us, but all we found was his backpack, abandoned in the middle of the tunnel. Steve was nowhere to be found. After Steve disappeared, we realized that we were completely alone in this terrible place. The feeling of despair was growing by the minute. We tried to stay calm, but fear was squeezing our hearts more and more. We no longer knew what to do or where to go. Tunnels that used to seem like just dark corridors have now turned into an endless maze in which we got lost not only physically but also mentally. The footsteps in the dark that we heard no longer seemed to be our own. The whispers grew louder, and the air in the tunnel seemed to become denser and heavier. Every movement was difficult, as if some unknown force was squeezing us in its invisible embrace. We began to suspect that someone or something was watching us, playing with us like a cat with a mouse. On the seventh day, our water supply ran out. Hunger became excruciating. My throat was dry, and every step turned into torture. We had only one hope left get to the surface, but the tunnels seemed endless. We didn't know where to go anymore. Every new passage turned out to be a dead end. Every door was locked or blocked. At some point, wandering in another corridor, we came across a narrow staircase leading down. It looked like our last chance to find a way out, or at least some kind of solution. We went down, but this time the tunnel turned out to be even narrower and wetter. The walls were covered with mold and the floor was slippery with humidity. Soon we came to a massive metal door, from behind which came a thud. 
We stood in front of the door, shivering with horror, cold, but we had no other choice, either open it or stay in this nightmare forever. We gathered our last strength and, exerting all our remaining courage, pulled the door open, creaked and gave way. What we saw outside the door was the apotheosis of our horror. It was a huge room, like an underground hangar. In the center of the room stood some kind of ancient and massive machine, making a faint but distinct hum. Scattered around the car were the remains of what had once been humans, twisted skeletons covered with rusty chains, and scabs that had long decomposed in this cold and gloomy place. And then we saw something that made us literally freeze. Steve was hanging from one of the rusty chains, hanging from the ceiling. His face was distorted in a grimace of horror, and his hands were tightly clutching a rusty pipe. His eyes were full of fear, and it was obvious that he had seen something so terrible that his mind simply couldn't stand it. We stood in mute horror, unable to move. At that moment, the hum of the car intensified. It began to vibrate, and a screeching sound echoed through the room, which made my ears pop. Suddenly, the lights of our lanterns began to flicker and went out, plunging us into pitch darkness. We could only hear a growing hum and felt something moving in the dark. In a panic, we rushed back down the tunnel, groping, not knowing where we were running and what was waiting for us. But the tunnels have changed. We bumped into walls, dead ends, and every step echoed as if someone or something was chasing us. At some point, I was left alone and none of my friends were in sight anymore. I kept running until I felt that my strength had completely left me. My legs felt weak, my breathing became heavy, I couldn't stop. The air consumed me completely. Finally, I stumbled and fell, sliding across the cold and damp floor. In the dim light of my last remaining battery, I saw something terrible in front of me. Doors made of stone going deep and huge chains that stretched to them. I knew that if I stayed here, I would suffer the same fate as Steve. Gathering my last strength, I rushed to the exit, but the tunnel closed in front of me, leaving me in complete darkness. There were whispers all around, quiet, penetrating, as if the island itself was whispering its ominous secret. I don't remember anything else. I woke up on the shore where the fishermen found me. I'm the only one left. All my friends disappeared into these tunnels and I lost them forever. But the worst thing is that I can't forget those whispers that I still hear in the dark.